Welcome to the first segment of In Touch with iOS. My name is David Ginsberg, and joining me is Melissa Davis. How are you doing, Melissa? Great, dude. It's great to be here. I'm really excited about this. I sure am. This is uh, this is going to be a, quite a journey here. We're looking to do some fun things, talking about iOS and anything related to iOS. And we'll we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, first of all, for those of you who don't know anything about us, we wanted to give a little bit of background on each of us and what uh, what we do. So at least uh, you have a good understanding of where we come from. Um, I'll go first. If that's okay, Melissa. Absolutely. Um, so a little bit of background on me. I've worked in the IT support industry for the IT industry for over uh, 18 years. I work for an insurance company in the enterprise and support uh, Windows as well as Mac. And I've been doing that, like I said, for 18 years. Um, I also am the president of a local Apple user group here in the Chicago area. And uh, just was uh, just fresh out of uh, Mac stock for the second year of doing a presentation and talk uh, in Mac stock. Um, and uh, real, real excited about that. We'll touch about that in a minute. In a minute. Um, Melissa, go ahead and let everybody else know about uh, what you're all about. Oh, gosh, let's see if I can keep it as brief as yours. <laughs> uh, so I would say I've been doing this kind of stuff since like the 90s. Uh, I say that because I still consider like my first client, so to speak, one of my high school teachers back in the 90s when I started using Macintosh computers. Uh, how long have you been using Macintosh computers? I'm late into the game of uh, Mac and Apple, and for that for that sake, I, I started in 2006. So you you go a lot farther back than I do. Um, when the Intel processors were introduced, um, that's when I came on board, and uh, haven't turned back ever since. So so I, you got a little you're a little ahead of me as far as well, you're, uh, you're you're making up for lost time. I, I would I say sure <laughs> you're doing pretty well for only being a decade in. Yeah. Your your experience is as old as my oldest <laughs> child. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so yes, I I now have a ten year old, and so I kind of use that as like a. I don't know, what would you call that? Like a milestone, if you will, because that's about how long I've been doing independent consulting. So that's a little bit more about me. Uh, I started to have a similar background in IT in that I did support. I used to work at an elementary school as a site technician. So I would do a lot of same, similar things that you were telling me about, basically support the teachers, the students, the staff members with all of their Macintoshes. Now, this was kind of pre-iOS stuff. So uh, I know how to take apart computers, put them back together, and then I, I train people. And so that branched off to doing independent consulting. When I decided to be a stay-at-home mom, quote-unquote, <laughs> I tried. I tried really hard to, like, stay at home. But, you know, that just I, – I felt like I still needed to, to work. I, I just felt this calling, like I still needed to do this stuff, that there was this need. In fact, the teachers are the ones at my last school that gave me sort of my nickname because they would say, you know, as they were saying goodbye to me, they were so sad that I was leaving, you know, just, it wasn't working out, you know, it just having a brand new baby and sure. I felt that calling too, you know, tugging on me to, to be at home with my son. And so they said, uh, oh, we're going to miss you. You know, you took such good care of us. You were like our Mac mommy. And I, so that name uh, just kind of stuck. They, so that's, were, yeah. <laughs> It worked. It just worked. And so uh, I kind of take a very nurturing approach. And so some of the teachers actually hired me to be their private consultant, basically, to come to their home. And so I'd bring my little boy and, you know, my <laughs> now 10-year-old who was this, you know, pudgy little baby, and I'd bring him in the playpen and I'd sit down and, you know, we'd work on computers and I'd help them with their routers and, you know, just stuff like that. And it just kind of grew from there. And so now for 10 years now, I've been an independent uh, private consultant awesome. or done a little bit of small business, but mostly mostly senior citizens is kind of the bulk of, of who I deal with. And I really, really love it. I'm, I'm really glad to do what I do. And now this, this podcast uh, venture, I'm getting back into it. I used to have yeah. podcasts, you know, a long time ago and, I'm looking forward to to growing this. It, it'll be another nurturing thing, another thing that I can nurture now that yeah. my kids are getting older and I don't yet have a cat, so I have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll also uh, touch upon that a little bit as far as uh, as far as helping others as well. Um, I, I have dabbled a little bit into doing some of the uh, consulting work too. I don't do it full time uh, as uh, any. I really didn't do it full time. I always did it part time since my full time job is working in the enterprise. But I really enjoy. Uh, spending the time with the folks and helping them and uh, uh, sharing my knowledge to, of technology with them and making their lives easier. Um, going, going, going back to the uh, uh, 
the teachings. Um, you know, when I'm in the uh, when I'm at the, the Mac user group, I do lead a, uh, a iPhone special interest group, and, and it's really uh, rewarding to see a lot of the folks enjoy coming and learning more about uh, iPhone, iPad, and iOS. And, you know, about 30 or 40 people come to the session each time I do it. So it's, That's so, amazing. So I've got some, got some really good following with that, and, and I really enjoy uh, giving back to the community and back to our group. So, so I, I do uh, touch upon that stuff uh, uh, as, as well so um very, but, uh, very rewarding it really is and, and then that's that's what i really like a lot is is is, is being able to, to to give back to these folks and and being able to uh to, uh to, to do that so but anyway we kind of want to just kind of give a little bit of a background what we're looking to do with the, this this uh, segment uh, and, and and what are the expectations are going to be with us what we're going to talk about and Melissa and I were talking, and we, that's where really the name "In Touch with iOS" came from. And I give Melissa full credit; she came up with a great name for our for our, <laughs> our segment. I really love it. And what's going to what it really describes is what we're going to do is we're going to talk everything iOS, iPhone, iPad. We'll we'll dabble in iP- Apple Watch, although Melissa doesn't have an Apple Watch yet. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> um, and then we and then we, and I feel TV OS should be part of that package too because th- that really is part of a lot of what uh, Apple's been doing with uh, with iOS too. I mean, you, you've got a lot of things that are 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 going with that so um that's really what we're looking to do and, and we got a segment going on here right now with uh going for our very first episode which i'm super excited about and uh and we'll go from there um let's talk about the toys that we play with um yeah. so you, you touched you you talked a little bit about how we want to talk a little bit about tv os do you have the latest apple tv of course i do okay see, <laughs> see i don't yet I, again same with the, like the apple watch like i am really kind of on this will be so interesting to see how this all plays out because i am at a point in my technology use right now where I'm getting ready to upgrade a whole bunch of things. You know, like I've been working with more clients and saving up a lot more and I'm I'm kind of like I'm ready to bounce. <laughs> I'm ready to to get the the next thing. So I have two third gens and we absolutely love those things. I mean, the kids even use it as a game console with their iPad. They we do a lot of airplay. We do I mean, we do we do awesome things with it. We can talk more about this in other episodes. I'm so excited to talk about these kinds of things. Yeah. We'll be sitting there in the living room as a family and we want to talk about, say, I don't know, something that we want to buy on Amazon. We'll just, you know, sit there with our phones and any anybody, I mean, even the six-year-old knows how to do it. There'll be something will be interesting on one of our iOS devices and we'll just kind of flip up the AirPlay and put it up on the big screen TV and then the whole family has a discussion about it. And they do that with gaming, you know, whether it's Minecraft on the iPad, sure. those sorts of things. So you have the, the the newest gen and I have the one just before that and I, I want to upgrade to the first gen. <laughs> Oh, you have one of each. each. I actually have, I have a second gen also, but I'm having so many problems with it. It's just, it's just been kind of flaky lately. So I'm, we can talk about that too. I want to find way, I'm really big on trying to find ways to repurpose older technology. I'm not big on just throwing in the dumpster. I want to try to find like a use for it. eBay. (laughs) Yeah. Well, maybe you can coach me on that a little bit too. We'll we'll talk about it in the future too. Yeah. See, we've already started paving the way for for more episodes here already. (laughs) Yeah. Hopefully we can get our listeners excited about, you know, more things that we'll talk about. So, So, uh, but, but I'm, I'm kind of with with equipment, you know. I, I'm kind of been trying to hold back because uh, I've always been the early adopter. Would buy the newest things. I wouldn't waste any time when the new I, the, when the new iPhone comes out. I'm the first person in line buying the new iPhone. Uh, <laughs> when, so I have an iPhone 6s Plus. So I absolutely love the large size iPhone. Um, and uh, have you sit in the lines? Yes, I have. You have? Oh, wow. See, I've never experienced I'll admit it, but it wasn't. The good thing was I wasn't one of the crazy one. The first, I did not buy the first iPhone, so I, I did not go with the first gen iPhone. Uh-huh. I started with the 3G, 3GS. I've pretty See, me much too. Had, I started with 3GS. So I pretty much have been, I've had every model since then. <laughs> See, I'm on the S cycle. I, I wait. I like being yeah. on the S cycle. I don't know. There's, there's people that poo-poo that for some reason, but I like that extra special whatever they come out with. Yeah. So I always purposely yeah. wait for the S cycle. And then in our family, everything gets handed down. So, like, nothing goes to waste. Yeah. So, um and and so I've I've always been the early adopter. So I need to I need to kind of step back. I gotta I gotta I gotta get, take care of that and stop doing that so often. Well, um, not 
necessarily. Right. You have to eat your own dog food, right? That's right. <laughs> and it doesn't taste all that bad either, I have uh, to say. I can agree with that. So That's um, my excuse for it. See, so, we're, we're going to be uh, probably good and bad influences on each other. I know. I know. <laughs> Our poor spouses. <laughs> I know, I know. The, um, and... Going back real, real quickly to back to MaxDoc, and that was what my talk was at MaxDoc, and we're hoping the video will be out on the um, the, the For Mac Eyes Only uh, uh, YouTube page soon. Um, my talk was on the iPad Pro, and could it be your full time computing device? Um, so I originally, and I talked about it. I originally uh, had the iPad had pro 12.9 inch that was given to me as a gift uh it was my 50th birthday so uh, all my family bought it and i've had every happy birthday uh, to you yeah, yeah that's, that wasn't a really nice gift and i've again not only am i an early adopter on iphone i'm an early adopter on ipads <laughs> although i was smart I, I i stopped at the i had the third gen and i stopped and didn't get the fourth gen and then i went to the air and then the air two and then once the air once the pro came out i was like itching i want, I want this ipad pro 12.9 inch so I got it, which was great, and so it was a gift. So I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I didn't have to spend any money on this one. That so remind me, that's the gigantic one, right? That's the large size, 13, 12.9 inch. So, and so then, you like the size, that form factor? Uh, it's big. It, it is, is big. And then, Except for when Guy Searle holds it, then it looks like just a normal size <laughs> iPad. Right, that's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then, of course, the iPad Pro 9.7 inch model came on, and then, of course, you know what I did is I went ahead and bought it. Uh-huh. Uh, so... <laughs> I kind of joked with my wife, and, and when we were in the show, I said, oh, well, I had a picture of myself holding them both in my hands, and I said, look, honey, I bought this one, too. I'm sorry. You're in the audience. I didn't mean to, <laughs> to tell you this. <laughs> oh, that's so, funny. But she, but she actually uh, encouraged me to do that, so it was kind of fun. So, oh. no, I, I, a little, it's a little extreme. I agree. Um, but, you know, I really like I like uh, uh, adapting to technology, and the 9.7-inch model does have... Uh, Quite the, quite the screen uh, color, which the, the two tone uh, color display. So I was that's what's real super excited about. So, but no, enough of that. We don't want to get too. I don't want to do too deep on that. Yeah, um, we'll save that for other episodes. But, yeah, but we so did the, want to kind of give an overview of the toys that we do have in the iOS right. um, yeah. ecosystem. <laughs> and I'll throw in. I do have a 2014 MacBook Pro. Love it. And I, and we just talked about. It. I do have the Apple TV in the third and fourth gen. So um, I also have the mic that you're about to talk about. Let's go and let what kind of toys you have. So I'm keeping it simple today, at least for for the okay. purposes of our you know first foray into this. Um, I'm really just basically working with a 2009 MacBook Pro. And which I said before, like I'm itching to upgrade. So I'm waiting. Oh, it's mm-hmm. September cannot get here fast enough. <laughs> uh, and I'm literally just plugged in directly to the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB mic. I just got that plugged into my USB port and I've got my earbuds mm-hmm. plugged into the bottom of that. And that's how I'm rolling today. That's, that's all I'm using, just those two things. Well, that's that's about as simple as it gets. Uh, I guess, like I said, I'm a little crazy, but that maybe I'm gonna have to <laughs> good kind of crazy, a good, a good fun crazy. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all the equipment we use. Um, let's go move on and we talk a little bit about uh, what's been going on in iOS. And you wanted to start with uh, the iPhone Seven. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. Um, well, the, the, there, there is uh, there is a uh, a roundup on the Mac Rumors site that we're probably going to refer to, and I think the biggest thing that's coming out of that is the fact that they're going to potentially be eliminating the 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack and just use the headphone jack as a uh, for with the lightning connector instead. So there are a lot of people have been a little little, little up in an uproar with uh, with that. Um, Can I just tell you that I spent several hours last night, like when I was kind of tossing and turning and couldn't sleep. I mean, this was. I'll admit it, this was kind of keeping me up at night just a little bit, only because <laughs> I uh, I listened to, it's. I'll talk about it later, but I listened to ASMR, it's, they're, they're videos, but I listened for the audio. So mm-hmm. I have a pair of sleep headphones that are actually, um, so it's just basically like a stretchy band mm-hmm. that has these flat little earbuds inside that, so you can, I'm a side sleeper, so when you lay on your side, it doesn't dig into your ear, right. and you can, you know, cover your, cover your eyes, so it blocks out the light. And I actually, I, I absolutely love these things. And this is like a necessity for me. And I'm thinking to myself, like, when they ditch the, the headphone jack, what am I going to do? So I started pouring over Amazon last night looking for a Bluetooth replacement. And I just, I just have not gotten there yet. And so this will be an interesting develop as the show goes on to, like, you know, the the 
the adventure of what does Melissa get for a replacement? You know, tune in to find out later because uh, I'm not there yet. That's what I will be looking. If anybody's listening to this and has any suggestions, I am all literally all ears. I would really like some recommendations on some Bluetooth not just Bluetooth headsets, not just, you know, earbuds or something. I'm, I'm talking like eye mask kind of thing that you can sleep with. And so, and it has to be, so these are my criteria. It has to be <laughs> something that I can sleep with. And, uh, the disappointing thing when I went on my flight to max stock was the volume was not near enough, loud enough to, to combat the engine noise. So yeah. they were practically useless. I couldn't listen to my, I couldn't fall asleep to like my podcasts on my red eye. Like I normally would like to, it just wasn't loud enough. So it's got to have that volume there. So sorry, back to what you were talking no, about no. In the article, but this is what I've really been thinking about. This is how this particular detail impacts me personally. Yeah, no, I, how funny you say that, because I also have a pair of those that are called the, the sleep phones. Um, mm-hmm. and, and again, yeah, the, the, you're right. The, the quality, I mean, you're paying basically for the headband. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, then, and the earbuds are in there, and they're not very good quality earbuds. So and it doesn't but seem like they come out. it's enough to get the out. job done. You know, <laughs> it gets the job done when you're laying, and yeah, I mean, it's like wearing like a headband on your head with the earphones uh, covering your ears. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I had those too. So I would be interesting to see if, if if anybody out there knows if there's if there's one out there. I've I've Googled it myself and haven't uh, seen much. So yeah, because uh, other than that, I mean, the the th- the headphone jack going away is not that big of a deal because. But see, I I plug my phone in every night and I charge it. So I'm not willing to go and get a set of headphones, you know, even a set of sleep phones to plug into that port, to plug into that. What is it going to be? Uh, is, it gonna be USB, is it going to be? It's still going to stay lightning. It's not going to be USB-C, right. right? Nope. It's going to be lightning. Yeah. So in fact, yeah. Yeah. In fact, the, the uh, website where we're looking at uh, the boy genius report, BGR.com, we'll have that in the show notes. Um, that uh, they were showing pictures of the actual, actual, uh, Apple earbuds that have the lightning connector on it. And then the other thing uh, Apple's going to provide is it looks like there's going to be a lightning to 3.5 millimeter jack adapter that's uh, going to be, everybody's going to lose, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, so apparently... The dongles gonna, always work out so well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I think that's a couple of the things that, uh, two of the things that kind of stood out with the with the iPhone 7 coming. Um, there's numerous other things that are out there, the design, and I think what Apple's thinking and why they want to do this is they're going to they're really trying to thin thin out the size of the iPhone and even more than it already is. I mean, that it's pretty. Th- me. I think it, it's thin it, enough. It's, I mean, it's pretty thin as it is anyway. So come on, guys, like um, it's like the iPhone has its like own body image problems or something. Come on. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, of course, all the other stuff that you'd always expect to see is the camera is going to be improved and the more yeah. RAM and the processor is going to an A10 processor and that just blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, it just kind of seems that it's going to be, you know, another upgrade that a lot of people aren't going to go with because I mean, a lot of people have been holding on to their phones and they really don't want to, they they're yeah. not ready to upgrade yet. So. They have longevity. You know, they last a they long do. time. So you said you, you, were, you still have some, you still want to have a 4S, right? Yeah, well, so we were talking a little bit about this pre-show. I mean, yeah. uh, nothing goes to waste in, in this household. You know, we've been on the S cycle so since the 3GS, just like I think you said you started out. But we yeah. still have all those phones, and they are still in use. The 3GS right. serves as an iPod Touch for my 6-year-old. My my 10-year-old has his own 4S because he inherited it. Uh, in right. fact, they both actually have 4Ss because we were on AT&T, and we had one of those deals where... You know, it was like a bring your own phone, and then we got one of them for 99 cents. So we were like, well, why not, you know, have an extra phone? And I can tell you other stories that I'll save for other episodes about <laughs> having phones stolen and recovering them and where that little 99 cent phone really came in handy as a backup. So it was worth it having that. So we have in this house, we have a 3GS, we have two, four. S's, one that's the 8 gigabyte and one that's the 16. Yeah. We have a 5S that's my husband's, and then I have the 6S. You have the 6S Plus, and I have right. the regular 6S. Sure. I was so tempted to get the Plus, but I just, I mean, I it. I, I, it's just, it's a, it's a big phone. <laughs> I just couldn't wrap my head around carrying that big of a phone and like, where would I put it? And because a lot of times I'll tell you, you know, I leave the house, 
I have one of those little pockets and that's something we can, we can post in show notes. I have one of those little pockets that I keep my license and my credit cards in sure. and I'm kind of like a, I don't like having to carry a purse if I don't have to. So I will just run out of the house with just my iPhone and that's it. Sure. And, but then the question comes like, all right, I gotta lock the door. I've got to like shove it in my shirt or something like, where am I going to put this thing? Cause it's just a little bit too big for me for pockets. So I ultimately decided to go with the success and I'm happy with it. I mean, I love it. Every, every new iteration, every time I get a new phone, I say, oh, this is my new favorite. You know, oh no, this is my favorite. Like, no, this is the best one. You know, it just keeps getting better and better for me. So I have never had the, the urge to kind of go back down in size like other people have. There's been people I know who have gone with the bigger phone and then said, nope, nope, I, I want the 5S, what is it, the, the SE, and they're happier with that form factor. So. Absolutely. The um, one, I'll kind of go back to your, your your the success versus success plus. Well, I had the iPhone six plus, and you know, of course, me, I have to upgrade. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I get the success plus. But then I I gave my wife the option. She had the six. I said, well, why don't we sell your six and you 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 take a look and see if you really like this larger size uh, the six plus. And oh, uh, what sure did enough, you say? She loves it. She's that's her full time so, phone now. So, so you she'll both be sold. have six S pluses. Well, she has a six plus. The I six have the six plus. S plus. So and we sold off her old iPhone six and did it on Craigslist and you know got put that money towards it and uh, and you know now she's using the six plus, the larger size model. I'm using the six S plus. Nice. I mean, it so, really at that point it becomes. I mean, it already is even with the six, but I mean, it really is like a little mini computer in your pocket. I mean, it's really a computer at that. It point. really is. It really is. I mean, I just, as a day goes by, I'm not amazed at what I can do on this iPhone that's not limiting to what you have to use a iPad or an iP- or, a, or a Mac for that matter. Um, so it really is. So let me pick your brain about this. So this is one of the things I wanted to talk about was my, sure. my dad has the 4S so that it was his first foray into smartphone land. And, you know, I almost feel kind of bad. I mean, th- those were the choices we had at the time. But my dad, you know, he's a big guy. He's got big fingers and stuff. And mm-hmm. he wanted to have a smartphone. He wanted to experience it. He wanted an iPhone. And so we put him on our family plan and we got him at the time. You know, this was like a good deal. It was a good like entry level kind of thing um, because we got him the other, uh, you know, at the time, because of the plan that we had, we were able to get him the 99 cent uh, eight gigabyte 4S model. You know, it's just like enough to like, you know, here's a, a smartphone for you. It's an iPhone. Let's see if you like it, that sort of thing. Um, it's just too small for him. It really is. And so hmm. uh, he bought my, I had an iPad third gen. And so okay. I sold that to him. Uh, and then he got the iPhone 4S. And now, so this is what now, you know, going on four years ago. So he's now starting to get to a point where he's approaching retirement. He's trying to decide, you know, what he wants to do to try to save money here and there. So, so I've been trying to, you know, figure out what is the best for my dad. You know, I do this with my clients all the time, you know, trying to pick out, help them pick out the best device for their needs and that sort of thing. So I think ultimately we're going to be waiting. We talked about, or we're going to talk about a little bit, you know, iPhone seven rumors, that sort of thing. Talk sure. about the, the lightning port now being, or the, the headphone jack being gone, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm thinking he's going to have to wait. You know, I, I, I kind of want him to wait until September to make any, any major decisions, but I'm trying to talk him into ditching his iPad third gen. Cause it's getting, it's getting pretty long with the tooth now. It's yeah. I mean, I have over. a fourth gen and I've nuke and paved it once already and I need to do it again because it's really starting to get slow and sluggish and mm, it's not responding. Was, I mean, mm. it's loaded with kid stuff. So <laughs> that's part of the problem too. It's just loaded. Sure. I mean, it's just overloaded almost. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, this is one of my ideas so far is, but it all, it all blows down to screen size. Um, I'm thinking I really want him to see if he can either trade it in or eBay it or whatever, you know, try to get a little bit of return on that investment, but, but maybe, and not even ditch the, the 4S. Cause I'll tell you why I, I was going to say, dad, why don't you, you know, get rid of the 4S and get rid of the iPad third gen, you know, sell them off or try to see if you can get a little bit of money for them and upgrade to the iPhone 6S plus. Right. But then I started thinking about it cause I'm also trying to convince him to get rid of his landline. See, as he approaches mm. retirement, he's, you know, trying to figure out how to live on a fixed income and that sort of thing. So I'm a frugalist, um, you know, a family of four, and we're always trying to, you know, cut corners and try to be able to afford this stuff. And so one of the things I'm trying to convince him of is to get rid of his landline. He's, he's now got it to the point where 
I mean, he just has calls going right to his answering machine because he gets nothing but telemarketer calls anyway. Right. So he's on our family plan. You know, he has an Arizona phone number, even though he lives out in Pennsylvania. And I thought, well, if that's an issue, we'll just get him a Google uh, Google voice number, you know, register it to something local. Uh, so how to live without a landline. And this will be like a huge adjustment for him. And then that's when it dawned on me that, well, crap, what if he like loses, <laughs> what if he loses it? How is he going to, like, he can't just call it if he doesn't have a landline. True. And so I thought maybe he should just keep the 4S around and just use like the, you know, find my iPhone app on it or something to be able to ping it so that he can hear the little noise going off. Yeah. What, but, what do you, what do you think? I mean, you've got all well, of these toys and stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're a dude, you know, <laughs> think about my dad. I mean, you know, I, one of my, well, my brother-in-law's father-in-law calls the six plus the 65 plus <laughs> it's bigger. You can see, you can adjust the text on it. You know, do you think I'm headed in the right direction for my dad? Well, the only thing I'm concerned about is the older devices, you know, they're, those are going under the road. So, I mean, as time goes on, they're going to become obsolete. I mean, you talk I about the, the, the third gen and the fourth gen iPads, those are under the road too. Uh, so is the, the iPad too. Uh, luckily in the iPad series, they, they kept it going for a long time. And, but you know, with iOS 10 coming out, none of those, the, none of those uh, devices will be upgraded. They're cut off. They're cut off. I mean, you talked about some of the old devices that you have for your kids. You know, those some of those are then they're on iOS six, iOS seven. They, yep. you know, and then there's no app developers out there developing for that version yep. anymore. So, you know, that's yeah, the apps of, that are on there, they have to stay on there. They have so to stay they, on there, right? It's just yeah. a toy. It's a glorified toy, is all it is. Exactly. It's not so useful for rather I mean, than basically a pacifier. <laughs> I, you would you would assume that Apple's going to keep the um, uh, the Find My iPhone uh, app up to date on those older devices, but you don't know. I mean, right. looking at what That's... they're doing now with, the, with that 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 would be my only concern um, if he ha- if he was to use that. Um, another alternative is I'm assuming he has high speed internet. You might look yeah. into maybe doing something like a service uh, I use called Uma, that uh, is a internet. It's like a I, uh, IPT phone service and. I had just had to buy the device as a, f- a fixed cost. It's like $90. I've talked about this before on uh, for Mac Guys Only. Um, and I pay $5 a month. It's basically just the 911 and the taxes. And it's just, mm-hmm. a, bas- it's a, just a basic phone. So it would still work. His, his existing phones that he has in the house would still plug into it. And you'll be able to just use that as a, as a quote-unquote home phone without having to be paying uh, a, a POTS line, which is you know, forty, fifty dollars a month. So just the landline service, but have that service in place just so that he could call nine one one, but he could also dial his iPhone with it? It could. Yeah, absolutely. As long and as he it, has the, the Google voice number because then see the the little bit of a snafu there would be it would be a long distance phone call for him to call his iPhone locally unless he dialed the Google Plus I mean not the Google Plus, the, the Google Voice phone number. Because well, he's using a five two oh area code. Yeah, long distance doesn't matter anymore for these services. And, oh, it doesn't? Uh, I, no, it's unlimited calls. I mean, well, not unlimited. You get like, I don't know, something like 500 minutes or something like that. But it doesn't matter where you call, anywhere in the United States. So there would be oh, no, it would I'm not occur. That. I want to check cards. into that. Yeah. Because that's, well, my, that's my big concern is, you know, what if he loses it? It's not like he can say, text me and say, you know, like some of my clients do, they still have, they, they hang on to their landlines for dear life because that's one of the biggest reasons. Because when they lose it, they just call it. They don't even bother going in to find my iPhone. They just call it. But I always remind them that, you know, well, what if you went to a movie theater and you muted it and you forgot that you, you know, you didn't unmute it. If you call it, it's not going to, unless you can hear it buzzing, which a lot of people's age, their hearing, you know, goes. And so you're not going to be able to hear it. So you have to be able to have access to to something that you could use, find my iPhone, I would think. But I mean, in worst case scenario, that that's what he would use. So yeah. that's so what I'm debating is like, should I tell him to get rid of the yeah. iPad? I mean, you know, he'd still be able, but like you just said, I mean, we, that's, that's operating on the assumption that find my iPhone is still going to be around on those older devices. And we still don't know if that's the case or not. So. Exactly. So that's the thing. Using the iPhone device might not be practical, and looking at a service like this might might uh, give him at least some comfort, especially mm-hmm. for nine one one. I mean, I mean nine one one can triangulate where you're located, but it can't sometimes can't pinpoint exactly where you are. Whereas right. these this service, and then he if he has an existing phone number, he can port that phone number to this Uma, Uma service. So he wouldn't oh, even good. lose he wouldn't even lose his home phone. He would be able to keep the same number. Oh, that's good. I have to check into that because that's that's one of the big things. See, he lives yeah. alone. You know, he's by himself. Yeah, yeah. It's like my husband and I, and then we have kids. I mean, we always have a phone that can call one of or or ping one of our devices somehow. So we don't right. have that problem. 
you know, and I've never really, I mean, I've had to call 911 since we've gone, uh, since we've ditched our landline, like probably going not quite 10 years ago, but about that long that we've gone without a landline and I've had to call 911 and it's never been an issue. I mean, sure. I just reported where I was. My younger son had a fibro seizure. I mean, you know, we were able yeah, to get sure. paramedics here. So it's, it's worked for us. We've, but I know for older generation folks that, you know, that not having that access to 911 really scares the bejesus out of them. Well, so they want that to have the option. That sounds like that would fit the bill. Yeah, I think the service is great. I mean, I, I was a I was a Vonage customer for basically when they started 10 years ago, and I and I discovered this Uma, and I was like, God, I don't want to pay more. I mean, I just want it as, as a basic phone. Yeah I, yeah. I don't need to be paying for all their services. I mean, they, they charge, you can get like for $120 a year or something like you can get like emails of your voicemails and all this stuff. I just, I just don't use it. So I, yeah, I yeah. can't so that so I'm just paying five dollars a month for taxes and 911 access and um, it, again it's uma o o m a dot com I, p- I will put that in the show notes and uh, it's a great service all you have to do is a flat rate cost of buying the the, the device it's like a little router that's for just that service uh, hundred dollars I think it's ninety dollars you know Best nice. Buy a lot of other places sell it and uh, Amazon and um, and just plug your standard phones into them and it just goes and just just links to the internet and it's over the internet and you know, away you go. Yep. So for as much as these iOS devices may cost you up front, and that seems to you know hurt your wallet a little bit, the long-term big-time picture is that you right. could end up saving money over time. It could pay for itself. Who knows? And then, and then adding that and talking about your iPhone or iOS device, your Uma account is accessible through, uh, through their app on on the uh, on the phone. So if you wanted to make a phone call using using that phone number or, or retrieve your voicemail, you can retrieve it right from the app. Oh, nice. So, nice. Well, that's, on, a, that's a great tip. I like that. Yeah. No, no, this, we just this, came up with that on the spot. We sure <laughs> that did. Works. I see. That's how this great how things work with this with this show. Um, so moving on to the next topic, you wanted to touch upon maybe you have a, a new client that uh, is actually going to be that's actually blind that might might be something with uh, yeah. going through iOS and it's something we actually learned at at, at MacStock with uh, with Allison. Um, Allison Hartley, yeah, and, Allison and Hartley. Dr. She, Robert Carter. Yep. Yeah, they have the it, Tech Doctor podcast, which is yeah. they're, they're two blind users that that do their own podcast and it's all it's all related to uh, using iOS devices and their Macs uh, mm-hmm. as blind users and I'm meeting more and more people in the accessibility community that I'm really yeah. excited about so yeah uh, coming up soon I'm going to be working with my very first blind client who uh, is completely new to Apple stuff so this is why this is also exciting and why September can't come soon enough because <laughs> you know I'm kind of it's all kind of uh, hinged upon whatever Apple releases, you know, new new device-wise, so that either the pricing of the older devices, if we decide to go that route, will go down a little bit, maybe more affordable, or there might be new de- new technologies or new things coming, like like a, a Mac OS Sierra and the ability to use Siri might be really, really great for her in, in addition to voiceover. And that's the, another reason why I really love the name of our podcast, In Touch with iOS, yeah. because... I'm literally physically going to be touching the OS, you know, and you working with it. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm watching Allison Hartley's demonstration was just mind blowing. And it was to me too. I mean, I don't think I'll ever be able to, to use it like that, of course, but I'm excited to at least try some of those uh, features. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to kind of learn some of it as much as I can and then, you know, give it to this client and, you know, give her some examples and, and just kind of put it literally in her hands and have her explore it and see what's going to best suit her needs because she's coming from a Windows environment. So she, I think, just has a laptop that's got just got upgraded to Windows 10 and she's only using JAWS. And so she's got a very limited scope of there's a whole other world out there for her that I can't wait to to give her access to. So I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about even getting more in touch with iOS. Really? Yeah, very much so. So that that's a little, that's exciting for you. You're going to definitely uh, definitely want to re- report back uh, to us. Oh, um, yep. And, and when when uh, when that happens, and it'll uh, be a new adventure. <laughs> yeah, it sure will. So uh, the next topic we want to kind of, and then this is probably going to wrap us up for today, is uh, talking a little bit about iOS 10 very briefly. Um, wanted to just kind of give people kind of a background on how you could actually access the beta version of iOS 10, and uh, 
do you really want to do that? Because it is kind of scary starting to put beta software on the device if you're not real comfortable with doing it. Uh, Apple, after at, with uh, I believe it was with iOS 8 or maybe iOS 9, one of the two versions, um, they opened it up to having public betas. So you actually, people who wanted to actually be bold and go out there and try to test the, the iOS, the iOS uh, operating system before uh, it was ready to be released to, the, to, to everybody uh, could do it. Um, and I, for the I will crazy ones. <laughs> it's for the crazy ones. They're kind of like the Apple commercial. Um, and I would, I would emphasize that, that if you decide to go down this road, do, do it at your own risk, and, and, you're, and you really got to be uh, thinking that have there's going to be some problems, <laughs> have a backup, and, yeah. you know, and you may have to revert back to the old version. So, Set your expectations realistically. That's yeah, there, there is going to be bugs. I mean, I am running it on, on one of my iPads, and so far it hasn't had too many bugs, but um, it, it seems to be running pretty good. I did run into some problems getting it installed at first because... Uh, um, the awesome thing what Apple's doing is they're, 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 before what you had to do, it was pretty convoluted what you had to do to install the beta versions on your device. You actually had to download the IPSW file, which is the actual more or less quote-unquote image of the operating system, put it in iTunes, and then you would have to force it to upgrade through iTunes. And we all know what a nightmare is dealing with iTunes and, and <laughs> trying to sync with your iOS device. Yeah, if so, you haven't been able to tell, this is the advanced section of the show. <laughs> yeah, we're a little advanced here. So uh, so what they've done, that part, that's why I'm not talking about it, because we're not you're not going to upgrade that way. Um, what they've done is with the new version of the beta software, they've actually uh, allowed you to be able to upgrade it over the air, and just how we, how we experience doing updates dates now with the you know the, with iOS that 9 feels more 9. native yeah, it feels much much more native. The only difference is that you, what you have to do is because it doesn't know you want it. There's what's called a certificate that has to be installed, and you go to the website, you download it, and it goes through the instructions of how to do it. But again, uh, tread lightly with this. It's uh, it's not for the lighthearted. I mean, you you got to be really committed to doing this, and and expect that there are going to be bugs, and have you all you'll may contend with issues. So if you're not a person that, does, that likes to, doesn't like to do that, then I'd say ignore what we're talking about here. No soup for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, where to go to it, and we'll have it in the show notes, is uh, if you go to beta.apple.com, and there's a, there's a link there to sign up. As long as you have an Apple ID, uh, you'll be able to sign up and be able to uh, download the software. They even have, uh, if you wanted to, to, to try out uh, Mac OS uh, Sierra, which is the latest version of the Mac uh, uh, operating system, if you if you so desire. Um, so, again, tread lightly. Um, one of the key things I wanted to, to kind of pull out, because there's a lot of great new features that they've added with um, uh, with iOS 10, and, and they did talk about it at the Worldwide Developers Talk Conference back in uh, in June that you and I talked about uh, on For Magnets Only. So <laughs> that was fun. Is the, yeah, exactly. Is, um, is what's called the what I'm so thrilled with the fact that they added now is the Safari split screen view. You know, what you basically can do is if you, you have it in uh, landscape mode, um, you actually can grab the tab. One of the, if you have two tabs open in the browser, if you, if you tap it and grab it, you can actually move it over and move it to the right side of the screen. And what it does is it creates two uh, split screen views of, of browsers. So you can be browsing two different websites at the same time, uh, which, you know, sometimes you want to be able to do that because you want to look at one site and compare it to another. Um, so I thought that that feature in itself is, is uh, really slick. And I'm so glad they finally did that. There were apps out there that actually did that in the past where you'd, you'd have to download an app either whether it would be free or, you know, relatively cheap uh, that did that split so uh but i thought uh, this th that's probably one of the neatest features that they've finally added uh, to safari uh, as far as ios 10 there's so many other things that we could talk about uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, save that for future episodes <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you have anything you want to add on the ios 10 or did you i know you've been having no, i'm kind of relying this. on you for for that dave <laughs> 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 i haven't it's not that i'm not brave enough i do love to tinker but it's just uh it's something that i can't really fit into my sure uh, usage right now especially with consulting i can't really afford you don't want to have you really yeah. can't take a chance unless you have, yeah. and that's the thing. I I did it on a second device, um, took that chance. Um, you know, if I ever have to revert back, and I'm not, not going to always have two iPads, so I. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I, I try to do. I, I was. Try, I miss those days being in IT support at the school where I had like one dedicated machine that was right. just solely for testing and. I mean, I could blow it away and bring it back to life, and yeah, I miss having that one uh, to just tinker I had, with. Had, had the, I have the iPod, iPod Touch, but it's the 
fifth gen, and of course, they've put that end of the road. <laughs> and this mm-hmm. this iPod Touch is perfectly fine. It's still pretty fast, and they are not oh. going to allow iOS 10 on this one. You have to have the sixth gen, which is the latest version. So that, that's what they've pretty much have done with iPad iPod Touches, uh, unfortunately. So uh, this will be going up for sale soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well. Uh, well, that's I think we had a blast here. This was we just, did, this, was just yeah, a, this was just a lot of great stuff, and um, there's more to come with in touch with iOS. And uh, I guess we're going to wrap this up here. And uh, sounds good. Thanks, thanks for listening to this uh, episode, our very first inaugural segment uh, for in touch with iOS. I'm Davey Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at uh, DaveG65 if you want to get in touch with me. And I'm Melissa Davis, and you can find me online as the Mac Mommy. That's on all social media. Uh, I also have a website, themacmommy.com, and you can find out all about my online experiences there. So thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening for the very first installment of In Touch uh, with iOS. And uh, like I said, we hope you'll tune into our future segments.